Okay. All right. Welcome, everyone. Hello. And thank you for joining us this week for another installment of Ask Epic. We meet every week to discuss all things epic. We want to provide new to epic families and returning families just a place to learn about all the opportunities we offer, which we offer a lot. I'm Carla Smitherman, and I'm from the Epic Development Team. Hey, everybody. My name's Ashley Brown, and I'm also from the Epic Development Team. I'm excited to be here today on Valentine's Day. I didn't even get very festive. I sort of accidentally wore an off pinkish color. I should have been more festive. Was not thinking about that when I got ready today. I was not feeling festive, I guess. But I'm um, excited to be here today. We're going to talk with um, someone from our GSS department, and they're, we're going to learn more about scheduling and transcripts and kind of some ins and outs about high school and how records, how all of that kind of plays into Epic, because it's a little different. Um, so we are going to be joined today by Judy Jones from uh, the GSS team. Judy, would you mind introducing yourself and telling us your role here at Epic? Sure. My name is Judy Jones, and I'm the director of our graduation support specialist team. We have about 20 team members, and our role is just really similar to that of, uh, of a brick and mortar school counselor, except we don't do the counseling side of it. We do just academic advising. Um, we do all things scheduling and helping students uh, meet those graduation requirements, but also help meet their individual goals of what they want to do after high school. Awesome. Like, thank you for being here today, Judy. We really appreciate it. Um, so we're excited to have you to dive in and learn more from you. You're the expert. Um, I email your team frequently <laughs> with questions because I always say a parent will ask me questions about something specific and I'll say, you know what, I think I'm going to need to pull in an expert here because y'all have some, some very specific stuff you, you guys do. So we're excited to learn more about that. Um, you know, at Epic, yes. we recognize that good education is much more, so much more than just a really great teacher and a really great curriculum. Um, there's so many more positions within a school district that help create success for students. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we really feel that your team, the GSS, they are part of that team that helps students find success. Um, for those of you joining in, we're excited to have you. Um, the way it works, if you have questions or comments that you'd like to share, please put those in the chat box and we will address them. Um, if you have something that maybe needs a little more one-on-one -on -one help, or um, you just kind of want to have go more into detail about something we're not talking about today, I'm going to drop our team phone number and email address in the chat and you can send us an email and someone from our team will reach out to you. Um, that's what Carla and I's team does. We handle family questions and um, we'd love to help you with that. So I'm going to right now put that um, information in the chat box if you'd like it. Yeah, thank you, Ashley. And our team loves, loves, loves handling those issues and challenges and fun questions that you have. So bring them on to us. We love it. And um, so before we get started, we really like to start out with a tip for our families to help them be successful. So Judy, I wanted to get that, uh, have you asked the question, I want to ask you this question. Uh, can you offer a tip for our families to help them be successful for the remainder of the year? What would you offer to our families? Yeah, I would say just be active in your education, right? And, and if there's something you don't know, something you want to know about, things like that, your teacher is going to be the first point to go to. Ask your teacher, and and we have some wonderful teachers. And if they don't know the answer, they're going to go find it for you. So just continue to to explore all the different things that we offer, all the different partnerships that we have, and um, just really lean into that because it's all about customizing your education at Epic, mm -hmm. and and we just have so many opportunities for that. So I would reach out to your teacher for sure on that. That is great. That sounds good. Communicate with your teacher. I think we've heard that a lot. And I I mean, but that's a great one. I mean, that's a good one. So we just heard it from the expert. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> we appreciate that. That's a great tip. I'm going to offer a tip today because it is happy, happy Valentine's Day to everyone, as Ashley mentioned. And um, even if you're not watching it on Valentine's Day, I want to offer this tip to our families. Because we are in virtual uh, virtual 
surroundings and we we work virtually for our families. My tip is to get moving. This is the, we have um, the, sometimes we're sitting down all the day long and we're on our laptops. So we want to get moving. So get that smartphone, set the time for every 15 minutes, get that jump rope out um, and, or the, uh, go outside and run around the block <laughs> if, if or whatever to get your body moving. Because what we know is that a healthy body makes a healthy mind. So that's my tip for our families. And it won't hurt for principals and teachers also, right? And administrators to do the same. So uh, that's my tip for our families. And we can pass that on to administrators too. Hint, hint for myself, really. <laughs> so anyway. Absolutely. I just got back from a walk. It's just so nice outside and it gets the brain going back again. <laughs> Wonderful. Exactly. After sitting on your laptop half the day, that's a great idea just to get up and get it moving. So, all right. Thank you so much. Yeah, well, I, I think see. You oh, sorry. I was just going to jump in real quick, Carla. I see a question from Angelica. Okay. She sure. said she's wondering um, if she can finish school um, before turning 25. Uh, she says I'm 24 right now. So um, I'm going to put our email address Angelica in the chat for you to send us an email. We have a program called Pathways that I think could work for you, but um, we would just need to kind of get some more information from you. So I'm going to put our email address in the chat. And if you'll just send me an email, we will, somebody will reach out to you and we'll kind of go over that with you. So I'll do that here in just one second. So you've got it. Um, one sec. There we go. Okay. Okay, very good. All right. So, um, so let's dive in. So, you know, the GSS, they're just one of the many experts who are working behind the scenes to deliver outcomes, great outcomes for our students. Um, these, they're, like Judy said, kind of like an advisor. I think that's a great way to put it. Um, they have to be um, really, really knowledgeable about so many things at our school. So scheduling, um, transcripts, helping students decide what classes to take, um, helping teachers come up with a plan for credit recovery when students are behind, all while complying with federal, state, and local laws, as long, along with specific policies. Um, that's a big task. <laughs> I'm exhausted just reading that. Um, so they have their hands full, and we are so lucky at Epic to have some of the best in the state. Um, we are so proud of the work they do. I've seen the GSS work hand in hand with teachers to get a student to graduation. Sometimes, especially as a student, they might come in and feeling like it's just insurmountable. You know, they're so behind. That's what they feel like in their mind. And then it's it's really cool to see how a GSS can work with a teacher. And they can come up with a plan like here, it's possible, we can do this. Um, so we're going to talk more about that today. So I'm really excited to dive in. Yes, absolutely. We have some, we just have some great, great people behind. I think Judy and I talked about today. I had some unsung heroes I'm mentioning to her that really helps and assisted students along the way. So we are excited about some of the things that we're going to talk about today. So uh, I want to ask you one question. Why is it important for students to be motivated, in your opinion? So, you know, if you want to accomplish a goal in, in graduating high school, right, is a huge goal. Is that something you're asking me? Right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, right. We've got to we've got to figure out what our motivation is. It's it's different for different people. And, um, you know, some people, they, their motivation is to join the military, right? And we have to take steps to get, get to that goal. Um, for some people, it's, they're not sure what's going to happen, but we know that, that that's the first step of the next phase in their life. And so we just have to find whatever that motivating factor is. And then that gives us the drive to get things done. Sometimes it's just one step at a time, one lesson at a time, one conversation at a time, but um, just just finding what it is that 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 really drives you because school can be hard, right? School, right. you know, it, it takes a lot of effort. And um, if you're not motivated, right, it time goes by really, really quickly. So. Well, I've seen your GSS specifically help motivate some of my <laughs> some of students. And so we are so grateful for that. And I've seen them partner with us in many situations. So we're grateful for that. Well, tell us about your GSS department and what some of the specifics that you do this time of year. 
Sure. So our main major job is to take a look at all of our high school students. Um, here at Epic, we get to customize every single schedule that we make for students. We're not limited by class sizes or what hour of the day a class is offered. And so that just brings about so many possibilities to be able to customize these schedules for students. And so what, what we do is, is we take a look at their transcript. You know, they could be coming in from another Oklahoma public school. They could be coming from out of state, out of country. And we take a look at those and we kind of translate them into uh, our system. And we take a look, it's kind of like a checklist. We just start plugging things in. Um, we look at the uh, what the State Department requires for a student to graduate in the state of Oklahoma. We plug it in there. And then we look at the student's goals. Are you wanting to go to college after high school? Are you wanting to go into the military? Um, are you wanting to learn a trade? Maybe you want to go to a career tech and, and learn a skill like uh, auto mechanics or cosmetology or something like that. What are your goals? And then we take all of that information and we build a schedule on it. And um, it's really, really great at Epic because we don't have the limitations that, that a lot of brick and mortar schools do. Um, you know, we have students that, that maybe wanna graduate early. Maybe they wanna graduate high school in three years and we can do that. Maybe we have a student that had some life happen and got behind and, you know, we need to get caught up so that they can they can get those credits and graduate. We can do that. We can do block scheduling. We can we just have so many different things that we can do with our customized schedules. And so that's the main thing that this department does. We still support our pre-K through eighth grade students. We have some great some middle school students who want to take high school classes. So of course we can we can help them and, and help them kind of talk to them about what their goals are and, and how to help them meet that. Um, that's, the, that's the main part of what we do. And then just at the end of that journey, making sure that when they're ready to graduate, that we have met every single requirement that the State Department requires of our students in, in Epic Charter Schools. Absolutely. Everything from ACT to U.S. History. To, I oh my goodness. all of that lovely. I cap. Yes. <laughs> And there's so many things that you all have to make sure the fulfillments are are taken yeah. care of. So my hat's off, like I said. <laughs> make sure every box is checked, right? That's right. That's right. Anyway, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, so we talked, we kind of, my next question is kind of lending itself to, you've already kind of touched on a little bit. So what is the process for graduating seniors? So do we, what does that look like? Right, so that uh, our team primarily um, communicates with the teacher. Not that we don't communicate with students, but that's just our primary connector. And so if you have finished all of your coursework and you're like, okay, I think I'm ready to graduate. I think I'm done. What do I do? The first step is to tell your teacher, right? Okay, I think I'm done. And what that teacher is gonna do is they're gonna submit, um, we have this ticketing system. And so they submit a ticket and they're like, okay, Johnny's ready to graduate. Can you check everything? And so that starts the process. And um, like Carla mentioned, there, there's there's more than just course completion. We have um, certain things like you have to participate in state testing. You have to complete your ICAP. And then next year, we're going to add a, a U.S. naturalization exam that has to be passed. So those, those kind of extras on top of your coursework, we're going to go through and we're going to check all those things off. And so once that happens and everything's checked, then we can process um, and give you a graduation date. And what I love about Epic is that can happen any day of the, of the year, the school year. We have already graduated over 500 students for this school year. And that says a lot. You know, I, I just uh, was able to, to process a couple of students today right? They want to join the military at the end of the month and, and they've met all those goals. And so I love that about our school. You don't have to wait. You don't have to waste your time. Um, you can do it on your time. And so um, if you're ready to graduate, you know, and you want to knock those classes out and do it quickly, go for it. There's nothing, there's nothing limiting you from doing that. 
There's so much opportunity with that. I love that. Mm -hmm. From taking classes from colleges to internships, the sky's the limit, like you said. We just, that is in military. Um, I just love that we, like you mentioned, we have so much flexibility. So mm -hmm. um, I love that we have that for our students. Um, speaking of, you were mentioning, we were talking, you know, you were talking about our seniors with um, putting in the ticket. Um, let's say you do graduate in February. Um, I know I just want to put this out there for families until they get that, that um, graduation date that they are finished. They still need to completely do bell ringers because attendance is still being taken. I just have to throw that out there because I know sometimes um, I've have talked to families and they're like, I'm done. Well, yeah, but just yeah, that's it. That's a really great point. You know, we since we don't meet in person every single day to, to get attendance, we have to do different things to count for attendance. And sometimes that's bell ringers. So you may be done with your coursework, but we're just waiting to complete the ICAP or looking at state testing. And so to stay enrolled and to avoid, you know, getting withdrawn for truancy, you, you don't want that because you're, you know, you're done with all your coursework. Yeah, um, while, while we're in the process of, of, of doing that exiting process and graduating process, you do definitely want to keep in attendance so that we we don't accidentally have something happen. We want to we want to exit you as a graduate, not not, you know, for truancy. So that's a that's a great point, Carla. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank yeah, you. I think that's smart to mention. I'm glad you asked that, Carly, because that's I know that happens with students all the time and because there is a, sometimes there's a little bit of downtime from when you finish all your work to getting it officially official, like on the transcript. And yeah, that has been I remember that as a teacher that can be <laughs> the students are like, what do you mean? I'm all done. Yeah, yeah it's a good thing to point out. Thank you. Um, okay, so talking about high school and credits and all of that. So how many credits does it take for a student to graduate from high school? Is right, it so different at Epic or is it the same just as anywhere else? Sorry, should have clarified. Yeah, no, that's a great question. So each school district does have local control on how many credits it takes. At Epic, we go with what the State Department says is the minimum graduation requirements. So we mimic exactly what they say are the minimum requirements. And so that's 23 credits, but they're very specific credits, right? We can't have 23 PE classes, right? <laughs> we have to do our English and math and things like that. So um, so 23 credits though is the minimum amount and, and that can be found on our website. It can be found on the State Department's website. We follow exactly what they say. Um, and then part of the GSS's job it's just to make sure you guys, you have those correct credits and you know, you've met all of your math, you met all of your English, all those things that we're bound by um, to meet. That's what, that's what we make sure is happening. Perfect. Yeah. I mean, the thought of 23 credits of PE, that sounds really great. <laughs> I know some kids that would be all over that, but that's not quite how it works. So I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, so can you tell us for families that are new to Epic, if they're enrolling with us, what is the process that you guys use for creating a schedule? Sure. So we we look at a couple of different things. Um, the first thing we we have to have is a transcript from your previous school. And that's, um, we, we can really cannot create a schedule without knowing what courses you've already taken or, um, you know, at where we're at, kind of in the middle of a semester right now. We also want to see your withdrawal grades because you've been doing work at your other school and we're going to try to align our classes with what you are taking there. So you don't lose that progress that you are doing at your other school. So those are two really important pieces of documentation. And the faster we, we get those in our hands, the, the quicker we can get you up and going. Um, we, we do request those records officially from our school to your previous school. And that happens once you meet with your teacher to do your ILP. Um, that's kind of your first, your first meeting that officially finalizes your enrollment with EPIC. And that really gets the ball rolling with all the official requests that happened from our school to the other school. And then um, there's a timeline there. They have up to three days to give it to us. But if you come to that first meeting with your teacher, with your transcript in your hand, they can scan that into us. And that kind of speeds up the process, you know, by a few days sometimes. 
Um, and then there's certain questions that that you answer uh, when you're meeting with that with your teacher for that first time on that ILP that are going to help us know what your plans are, what your goals are in that um, answering those things to the best of your knowledge. You know, are you wanting to go to college? Are you not wanting to go to college? Are you wanting to do concurrent enrollment? Things like that will really help us um, build that schedule in a way that's going to meet your needs and your desires for what your goals are. And um, we also look at, are you wanting to play a college sport? Are you, um, are you in CAA? Um, if you, if you want to be recruited to a division one or division two school, you have to have an NCAA account and NCAA has their own requirements that are a little different from Oklahoma. So we want to make sure that you're meeting those requirements so that you're eligible when it's time to get recruited maybe you want to go play basketball at, you know, OU or something like that. And um, we want to make sure that, that you're eligible. And so that's another thing that we're looking at. So as much information as you can give us when you're meeting with that teacher, there's a place for them to type in notes. We love it. It really helps. in, in you know, if you're interested in a certain thing, I want to, you know, go into cosmetology. Maybe we have an elective that we can give you that has cosmetology in it. So you can explore those careers and things like that. And that's something um, I just thought of you saying that. So do students have the ability to kind of choose some of the electives they would like to take? Do they have flexibility there? They do. It, it really depends on the, on the schedule, right? If what if they're if they're at a career tech, usually the career tech um, takes up all the spaces that you know, for their electives. But if they're not, we have so many different electives to choose from. Um, we on our on our Epic website, you can you can find the course catalogs. We have different curricula, and each curricula have different electives. Um, that we can do, but we also have things like work-based learning. If you have a job, you can get an elective credit for that. And those are things that we want to, to add to your schedule. So we're not um, giving you more work to do when you're already doing work, you're, you're going to get high school credit for it. So that's, it's, it's really neat um, that we, we have all these different options to fulfill those things. Yeah, absolutely. I had a question about, just wanted to verify something that I want to confirm. When we were talking about bringing new enrollees to uh, to EPIC, I wanted to make sure I'm speaking to eighth grade families. Okay. I know that a lot of times, a lot of those eighth grade classes do transfer to as freshman classes. Is that correct? In other words, if they take algebra eighth grade, is that correct? Because I've had some questions about that over the years. I just want to make sure, Judy, you tell me if that's correct or not. I see the smile. I'm not sure. Yeah, and I it's, it is. It, uh, I'm glad you spoke to that because a lot of a lot of students have the opportunity to take high school credits, high school courses while they're in middle school. Um, some schools as early as sixth grade, it's most common in eighth grade and some there's a few in the middle and they're in seventh grade. And so any high school credit you've earned at whatever grade level, as long as you took it at an accredited school, we're going to accept those credits. And so you want to make sure if you're coming in and you know that you've taken a high school class that, that we get that transcript so we can give you credit for it. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Yeah. And those do apply towards your graduation requirements. Awesome. So um, another question I have, and this probably depends on the class, so you can kind of direct me on what you do know, but um, for students that want to, maybe they get into a class and it's not quite the right fit. Do they have the option to change their schedule, get out of that class, or are they pretty well stuck? How does that work? For the most part, we'll just generalize here. Um, we actually just set that date um, at, for April 12th. Is okay. the last day that we we want to make any schedule adjustments, and the reason behind that is because after that you have six weeks left before the end of the school year, and so if we are switching out a class for you and you're starting a brand new course, we want to make sure that you have enough time to complete that brand new course before the end of the school year. So um, for the most part, the the last day to adjust a schedule is is April twelfth. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I know that that's something we've heard. And it's a little different too, just to clarify for students that are in high school and are taking concurrent, that's, that date is going to be 
decided upon by the the program that you're attending. So that's not necessarily an epic date. Yeah, that's a great point. Like the colleges have their own drop dates. They have their own uh, withdrawal dates. Some, you know, and there's usually two different ones there. And so whatever their, their uh, rules are, <laughs> we do follow those as well. Their rules apply. <laughs> their rules do apply. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, well, tell us about, I know you kind of mentioned the first line with our families is to go to the teacher. But do we have any formal way or informal way that a family can communicate with their GSS? Yes, yeah, so usually we we do a partnership with the teacher. Um, we found that it's it's best to include your teacher when meeting with your GSS because they know you, they know your circumstances, but they also know the educational side to it and the, and and what needs to happen there. So if you want to set up a meeting with your GSS or you have some graduation questions or you want to do a Zoom or something like that, absolutely we can do that. But the best way to do that is to go through your teacher and your teacher can request that of the GSS. We'll all do a group meeting together or a phone call together, whatever it is, because they're, those teachers are an integral part of, of your education. And we don't want them to be out of the loop because they're there to support you just like we are. And um, it's just best when we all meet together. So I know it sounds um, maybe a little standoffish to say, don't email your GSS directly. Um, you can, but we're going to just loop in your teacher anyways. And so it's it's best to to just initiate that through your teacher and then they can set up that meeting and we can all meet together. I love that you brought that up. I think as at Epic, especially because we're a virtual school, it's really easy for everybody to kind of be doing their own thing. Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately, what's best for that student is for all of us to work as a team. And so when the teacher is working with the GSS or maybe a counselor or the college and career advisor, that's when you're going to have everybody can work together and do what's best for that student. That's a much better option than you having separate conversations with each of these. And it's a lot easier for the student and the caregiver, right? So, yeah. um, and, I, and I like what she said about the teacher knows everything about that student at the moment. And, and the GSS can, is going to be able to, you're going to be able to communicate everything about that student with the GSS. So I, I love exactly what you just said. That's great. Yes. Um, okay, so what are some of the ways, and you kind of touched on this a little bit, but could you tell me more about how the GSS team helps with post-secondary planning, for example, going into the military or going into college? How do you guys handle that? So there's some um, base knowledge, I guess you want to say, that, that, that we have for those different paths after high school. And we, we do ask those questions on the IOP and and I just want to say, you're not locked into those, right? Like life happens, people change their minds. We can, we can change those paths at any time, um, again, through your teacher. But if we know that you are wanting to go to a college after high school, um, the best route is to be on that college prep plan, right? The, the, the colleges prefer certain courses to be taken to help better prepare you for college. And so when we know that, you, that that's your goal, then we're gonna schedule you in certain courses that help prepare you for that college path. And the same thing goes, if you're not wanting to go to college. Um, we often have people, I think kind of, I don't know if the words freak out or panic or something like that, but they're like, well, if I choose the non-college path, does that mean I can never go to college? And the answer is like, no, 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 you can go to college, uh, you know, at, at any point in time, depending on, you know, the college re entry requirements. And if you choose the non-college path in high school, the only thing that may happen when you enroll at the college, you might have to take some remedial courses, maybe in math. Maybe you didn't take that higher level math in high school that would have prepared you for college math. So you might have to take a remedial math class at the college, but you still get to go to college. So just making that selection and then changing your mind later, you're not locked in to anything. It's just certain courses in high school do better prepare you for those, those different situations afterwards. Um, you know, I know it seems like math always, 
always seems to be the topic of conversation that that is the deciding factor sometimes, um, especially we get to algebra two, usually as a junior. And um, that's hard and it's hard online, you know? And so sometimes uh, it, it if a student switches from the college prep path to go to the non-college prep path, we call it core, um, we can switch out algebra two for a less rigorous math course. Um, usually it's math of finance and that's okay. You know, we have that option and I love having that option because I, I don't know about you guys, but I like to ask questions and I can't imagine trying to learn online. I'm the girl who has to go into the classroom, raise my hand, you know, and, and interact and and maybe that for you is later on when you go to college and, and you're going to take that algebra two kind of equivalent course at the college. And that's OK. Um, you you can still go and do that. It just, um, you know, we're just looking at the at the high school requirements. Um, another option that that comes up often is is in Oklahoma, you can graduate. Uh, you get to choose either taking computer courses or a world language. You could take like Spanish or French or something like that. Um, but if you're going to college, you really want to look at what does that college want from me? A lot of colleges um, still want you to take two years of a world language instead of computers. Now, that's that's changing as we, you know, get more heavily involved in, in the tech world. But there are some colleges out there that are like, no, in high school, we want you to take two years of a world language instead of computers. And so those those types of, of decisions you know, we don't know every college requirement, but there's things that, that you can look at as a student as you're pursuing those, those career paths and decide. And we can help uh, do your schedule according to those, those goals. So hopefully that helps. I think that was very helpful. I just, I just love, there's so many options for students. Yeah. And I think the key is sitting parents down and families with your teacher, like we keep saying, and helping them break down all these options. But the fact that you all have to be able to put it in motion right. on, <laughs> is the key integral part for all of us. So you have to know how it all fits together on a schedule. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're again, we're so thankful that you understand all of that part of it, <laughs> your team. Yeah. And, and what I love, I love about this job is if if somebody's having a you know trouble with with a course or something like that or like I said life happens reach out let us let us try to come up with an option for you that works don't don't drop out of high school because of a math course you know let's let's try to figure something out usually we have options um that we can do we can't not have you take a math course right we have to we do have to take our math but we but we might have other options for you yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. That's good to know. And like you said, kids aren't locked in either. If you start just because you start on the core path, which isn't necessarily the higher ed plan um, curriculum wise, that doesn't mean you're not going to college. Um, I think that's something that students don't understand. And so it's it's definitely something that I'm glad we brought up today. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so today, you know, obviously it's not the beginning of the school year. We're we're honestly scarily close to the end of the school year. It's crazy. Um, mm -hmm. But can you tell me, does it look different for students that were to enroll in the middle or like now um, versus students that would enroll over the summer or at the beginning of the school year? Are there any differences to expect? There are. There are some differences. Um, if you're coming from another brick and mortar school, a public, public school, like I said, we try to look at your withdrawal grades, um, see what classes you were enrolled in and try to match them up, but sometimes they don't always align. You know, uh, different schools have different courses and we may not have a, a course that matches that. Um, so sometimes there's just not, not anything we can do with that. And you may have to start a different elective, but we do our best to align those. And that way your teacher can award that progress that you were already doing at your brick and mortar school to your courses at Epic so that you're not just starting over from the beginning. Um, but it's also another thing where if you were if you were taking like Spanish at your brick and mortar and you're like, oh, I don't wanna do Spanish online type of thing and we put you in it or something like that, or, you know, speak up, let your teacher know, like I'd rather take computers or I don't wanna continue with this course. Um, all of that communication is something that we can take into consideration when, when uh, making your schedule 
but sometimes the opposite happens too. Um, in our world language department, they, they do have an enrollment date deadline. And so you may have been taking that at your previous school. And so we may have to get approval to get you into our, our, our course and, and go through all of that. So there's some different little things that, that we look at in the middle of the school year. Whereas if coming either in the summer or coming at a, at a semester break makes it a little more clean, if you want to say, <laughs> um, easier break and easier start to it, but we have students enroll all year, all year round. And so it's not anything out of the ordinary for us. Um, you know, we have students enrolling in, in May even sometimes, mm -hmm. and, you know, maybe they just, they had to move and they have no control over that situation. And so we do our best to partner with you and the teacher to, to just transition you as easily as we can. Yeah, and I've definitely seen that with you guys. Um, so I would recommend to anybody that's enrolling, you know, at this time or later, um, if you have patience with your teacher and your GSS team, they're going to go out of their way to make that transition as smooth as possible for you. Um, and and again, the time to communicate those things, like Judy, you mentioned, if you were if you were taking Spanish at your previous school and you don't want to take it again, communicate that in the ILP um, so they can know that before they create a schedule. So it's really Really important in that ILP to communicate with your teacher your your expectations, what you want, what you don't want, um, so that we don't have to go back later and rectify those things. Um, that's something I, I see pretty frequently. Um, my last question for you today, Judy, is this is something I hear pretty frequently when I'm talking to families that are um, about to enroll at Epic and they say, but there's something not right on my transcript and I want to make sure it's correct. What can families do in that situation? Um, so just to clarify, is it a transcript from another school? Well, I guess so. I was speaking in that regard to a transcript from another school, but I guess also an epic transcript. Let's talk about both, I guess. Do both, yeah. So if if you notice that there's an error on your transcript from another school, you have to go back to that school. We cannot fix anything for, for another school. And so um, your best bet is just to go back to them. Usually there's a registrar there, that's your starting place. And you just pointed out maybe my date of birth is wrong. My name was spelled wrong. I got an A in this class and you have it as an F <laughs> type of thing. Like you wanna make sure all of that's, that's correct and on there. And so they, uh, that other school are the ones that have to correct that. There's not, we, we're not allowed to change that, right? It's their, their records, their school, they know what's going on over there. So then it's the same for us. If, if there's something on your Epic transcript and it generated from Epic, I will say that, um, an Epic course, you know, your name, your date of birth, you know, things happen when people fill out the enrollment application and we type in something wrong, we can get that fixed. Um, the best thing to do would be to go through your teacher again, have the teacher give us, um, they'll, they'll submit a ticket, and we'll, we'll get it fixed. Sometimes we have to go to like our enrollment department to get it fixed on the back end. But if it's a course or something like that and you and it's a final grade, what we are going to do is we're going to reach out to the teacher, right? Because even though we make your schedule, we, we put to, that together. If it's a final grade issue, we're going to go to your teacher or your principal, be, principal because they're the ones who, who verify the grade. They're the ones who issue that final grade we're not on the instructional side. And so you may say, I got a B, um, but she gave me a C. Um, well, we're gonna go back to that teacher and let you you know, do your, do your case, if you will, to that teacher. And then um, once the teacher verifies and said, oh yes, I forgot they did that extra credit and they were supposed to get a B, they'll come to us. And then at that point with their verification, we can update things like that. Okay, that's good. What about if it's something like, I know, I, I remember it was something kind of big for this one family. It was a, a, a name. It was their name. Uh, mm -hmm. It seems like they had a name change, maybe. Maybe it was an adoption. It was a while back. And it was a transcript. So what would that family do in that situation? So with a, with a name change, and that happens um, all the time. Um we're going to, we're, if you send it to us, we're just going to send it over to our enrollment department because they are the experts in knowing what kind of documentation 
we need to have on hand so that we can update that. You know, if you if, if it's a marriage license, we can do that. If it's adoption papers, we can do that. Some people just do legal name changes. You know, they there's different documents that they require in I don't know what they are, but um, but you know, like like Ashley said earlier, if you if you reach out to us first and it's not something we can handle, we're gonna get you over to the people that can. Um because name name changes do happen more commonly than I thought before I started working at at, at Epic for just different reasons. So. Yeah, very good. Okay. Well, we just thank you so much for all your unwavering dedication and commitment. Your team does such a great job and we have so much respect for you all. <laughs> I told you before we even started today of some of the specific examples that I've seen. And I think Ashley mentioned to you, our team relies on you heavily. So thank you so much for your commitment to excellence. So is there anything else you can share with us today that might help us out? Um, any last words of knowledge or nuggets <laughs> for us? Well, I would just say it's, you know, it's a, it's a pleasure to, to serve all of these students. And I just can't speak highly enough about our Epic culture in that our goal is to customize everything for, for our students. And so if there's something you have going on in your life, or there's a goal that you have, you know, maybe you want to be a valedictorian, maybe you want to go to an Ivy League school, maybe you want to do rodeo professionally. There's different things, believe it or not, that on the schedule we can do to help help support your goals. And so the key is just communicating that to your teacher and, and they can reach out to us and say, hey, this is what we were thinking about. This is what we're doing. This, you know, we're traveling all the time doing rodeo. Can we get a high school credit for that? Just asking questions like that, um, we, we often, often can say yes. And if we can't say yes, we usually have an alternate, you know, we can't do this, but what if we did this type of thing? And so um, what I, the other thing that we, I didn't, we didn't mention earlier, but I do want to kind of put a plug in there is our school has created something called these virtual internships. And coming in at the beginning of a semester or the beginning of a school year, they have these internships, which normally you would have to like go to a hospital to do an internship there or go to, you know, work with a plumber to do an internship there. We have virtual internships and what a great opportunity to be able to virtually learn about nursing, virtually learn about being a veterinarian something like that, where um, you can really explore that career and decide if that's something that that you want to get into, or maybe you start it and you're like, I, this isn't what I thought it was going to be, and, and change your mind. Um, but if, you, if you're a junior or a senior coming in, um, ask your teacher about those, because those are some really unique opportunities that Epic offers our students that are not really available that I know of uh, anywhere else. I think that's my last plug. <laughs> no, good. I'm glad you brought that I know. up. That's Thank great. You. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think the wonderful. the internships are such a great opportunity for students. Um, mm -hmm. And even within Epic, we have some really cool ones. Just about every department at Epic offers at least a couple internship positions. Um, I don't know. That's pretty amazing if you ask me, because a lot of times internships are hard to get. Um, but Epic really wants to place everybody. Everybody that wants an internship, we really want to see those students get a placement. And so um, just about anything you want to go into, you could find. But mm -hmm. we thank you so much, Judy, for being here. You've, you're a wealth of knowledge. Your team does so many great things for our students, and we're really happy to be able to partner with you. I totally agree with you about, um, you know, ultimately, we're all just here to, to work together to do what we can to support our students. Um, mm -hmm. I've never seen that more true at any other school than this one, and, and I truly do mean that. So it's great to talk to you again today, Judy. Um, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Those of you that joined us, thank you so much for being here. I hope you learned a lot. I know I learned some things. If you have more questions or have more information, maybe you'd like about our school. Um, I put our email address and team phone number in the chat. Please give us a call or an email. Somebody from our team would love to chat with you. Um, that's what we're here for is to support families and give them um, the information they need to make the best choice for their students. So thanks again, everybody for joining us today and come back next time for Ask Epic. Bye, everybody. Bye. Have a